This fourth generation Superb might well be the last all new fossil fueled car the Czech brand ever launches, so it's appropriate that as a product it's very Skoda. Sensible, spacious, good value and unpretentious in both hatch and estate form. There's something old, diesel engines, and something new, cutting edge PHEV power. The right kind of customer might even think the end result to be quite simply superb. The mainstream powertrain options both develop 150 PS and make 62 miles an hour in 9.2 seconds en route to 139, but are quite different. There's the mild hybrid 1.5 ETEP petrol unit we're trying here, which has the VW Group's latest 48 volt mild hybrid tech, or if you're more old school, the 2 litre TDI diesel, which in volume 150 PS form has nearly 50% more pulling power, 360 newton meters of it, hence a 2,200 kilogram braked towing weight figure that's 300 kilos more than this petrol model and will be of particular interest to many customers of this estate variant. This diesel can also be had in uprated 193 PS form, in which guise it's mated to a four-wheel drive system, and for many would, in this guise, make a more sensible alternative to a mid-sized SUV. Talking of sensible alternatives, probably the biggest news on the engine front is the massively improved PHEV drivetrain. The previous generation Superb IV PHEV generally got a thumbs down from British buyers and understandably so, with a relatively small 13 kilowatt hour battery yielding just 35 miles of rarely achieved range. So, Skoda's had another go, this time equipping the IV plug-in hybrid with a sizable 25.7 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is supposed to be able to offer driving range of up to 84 miles. The engine that cuts in at the end of all that is broadly the same 1.5 litre TSI four-cylinder unit we're trying today, but with the PHEV, this 150 PS power plant is mated to six rather than seven speed transmission and works in concert with a 118 PS electric motor, contributing to a total system output of 204 PS. Those rare folk who stretch right to Lauren and Clement trim at the very top of the range get the option of the fastest available Superb engine, a 265 PS 2 litre TSI petrol unit, which has to be had with four wheel drive and seems rather pointless given the sort of car this is. At first glance, this fourth generation Superb looks merely a mild evolution in its five door and estate forms. Closer inspection though, reveals some significant changes. For a start, the new MQB Evo platform allows it to become an even bigger car. This estate version's now only a fraction under five meters in length, around 40 millimeters longer than before, and the hatch version is 43 millimeters longer than its predecessor. There's also a shallower windscreen rake, which along with the sleeker roof line, helps this estate model be the most aerodynamic station wagon Skoda's ever made, with a drag coefficient of 0.25 CD, 15% better than the Mark III design. Inside, it feels spacious, basically like the kind of large executive class car you'd have to pay so much more for. And design-wise, there really is an awful lot going on here with lots of differently surfaced sustainable trimming elements. This time round, the cabin party piece lies with these three configurable rotary smart dials on the lower part of the centre console. Though, like some other switchgear elements, they feel a little cheap to the touch, as do the silver controls on this strange two-spoke steering wheel. There's plenty of screen tech, of course, this 10.25-inch virtual cockpit instrument display, and a vastly improved 13-inch central touchscreen, which now features AI-based chat GPT software that extends the functionality of the LoRa voice assistant. The seats are brilliant and include a standard driver's massaging function. And there are plenty of Skoda's so-called simply clever cabin storage areas. Let's take a seat in the back. Now, you'll expect a lot here from a Superb if we tell you that the only car in the whole of the Volkswagen Group portfolio with more rear seat legroom is an Audi A8 long wheelbase limousine. And sure enough, there really is a limousine-like feel to the way that once inside, 
you can stretch out back here thanks to a wheelbase length of 2,841 millimetres, the same as before. The designers have mounted the front seats a little higher than the norm so that rear folk can stretch out their brogues beneath them. But unless you're of basketball playing stature, that probably won't be necessary. You won't want for headroom either. The tailgate, which is now powered above base trim and can, of course, also be activated with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper, rises to reveal the expected cavernous space. 690 litres, 30 litres more than the Mark III model. It'll be 645 litres with a hatchback version, 20 litres more than before. A more versatile 40-20-40 split backrest hasn't yet made it to the superb, but you don't need it because the ski hatch features a standard. Fold everything flat in this estate and you free up as much as 1,920 litres of space or 1,770 with the plug-in hybrid model. So yes, it's all very practical. Like its Volkswagen Passat close cousin, the Superb suffers from the VW Group's rather baffling decision not to have developed a self-charging full hybrid engine. As we told you in our driving section, for customers of mainstream Superb seeking some sort of electrification, there's only a choice of either the somewhat ineffectual 48 volt mild hybrid tech we've been trying here, or the pricey option of the Superb IV plug-in hybrid which is why there's likely to continue to be a strong take-up for the powertrain that still probably suits this Skoda best, the 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS diesel. This manages up to 58 mpg on the combined cycle, usefully better than this 1.5 E-Tech 150 PS model's 54.2 mpg showing. But as usual, the diesel lets itself down a bit on CO2 emissions, a best of 128 grams per kilometer, compared to the mild hybrid petrol's 119 grams per kilometer best possible showing. For real frugality though, you've to turn to the IV plug-in hybrid model, which as we told you in our driving section, now has a much larger 25.7 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is supposed to be able to offer driving range of up to 84 miles. As usual with PHEVs, this skews the combined cycle fuel figure well into fantasy land. Here it's quoted at up to 784.3 miles per gallon. In reality, you probably wouldn't do much better than would be the case with a frugally driven diesel variant. And with the PHEV, you'd have to put up with a smaller fuel tank, 45 litres, as opposed to the usual 66 litres. But the important thing is that the HMRC believes the IV model's quoted CO2 figure up to 8 grams per kilometre, so a low benefit in kind taxation rating is guaranteed. The PHEV battery now supports DC charging at up to 50 kilowatts, which is much faster than the old shape Superb IV, which was limited to just 3.6 kilowatt AC charging. That means a 10 to 80% battery top up will take around 25 minutes, while the new 11 kilowatt onboard charger allows full home battery replenishment to take as little as two hours. This then remains a convincing flagship for Skoda's increasingly impressive model lineup, offering real luxury in an everyday accessible package. It's now smarter, safer, slicker, and particularly in plug-in hybrid form, more technically advanced as well. Or to put it another way, it is, to use Skoda's own words, simply clever.